Wisconsin Eyes Campaign 2024 programming is sponsored by Wisconsin Counties Association, Nicolay National Bank, Wisconsin Hospital Association, Operating Engineers Local 139, the Wisconsin Realtors Association, the Wisconsin Laborers District Council, and North Central States Regional Council of Carpenters. To support programs like this, please consider a tax-deductible donation at wisi.org slash donate or by texting WISI to 44321. Racine is the Democratic incumbent candidate for the 66th Assembly District. The election is November 5th. Representative Neubauer, welcome to Wisconsin Eye. Thank you for having me. I'll start by asking you, uh, what is your campaign's key message? Why are you running for this office again? Sure. So what I hear about from people in Racine is that they want to have a community that's a great place to raise a kid, that their children will want to stay and raise their own families. When I ran for the first time at 26, I think a lot of people saw in me their own kids or grandkids and hoped that we would be building a community where everyone had great opportunities for the long term. So that's the focus. And I've been in office now for a couple of years, but of course we have a new opportunity, hopefully to have a Democratic majority coming into next year. And so many of the policies we've been working on, on public education, infrastructure, and health care, hopefully will have an opportunity to be heard in the State Assembly. So if you're reelected, what's an example of a bill that's a priority for you to introduce right out of the gate? We need to enshrine abortion protections in state law. Uh, many people in Wisconsin lost access to a concrete right after the fall of Roe v. Wade. We do now have abortion available again in the state, but uh, that's tenuous. We have no statutory protections or constitutional protections. It's something I hear about a lot from people in this community, and so it's a priority for us as soon as we're able to ensure that women like me in Wisconsin have our rights protected. You know, we're coming into a biennial budget year. The state's projected to have more than a $3 billion surplus. What are your top two priorities for use of that surplus funding? So we, of course, hear quite a bit about the struggles that working families face uh, here in Racine County and across Wisconsin. Uh, we would like to see a middle class tax cut. Governor Evers has proposed a tax cut that's targeted at those families making 150000 or less. That's middle class uh, working families. We would like to see a bipartisan tax cut pass the legislature. In the last uh, session, Republicans were really focused on tax cuts that primarily benefited the wealthiest Wisconsinites, but I'm hoping that we'll see some more bipartisanship this year. We also want to do some more things to lower costs for working families, like investing in child care. We know that our providers are facing a real cliff, that there are many uh, spots available across the state if only providers could hire the staff to take care of those kids. And then, of course, there's families who are really struggling with access to child care. And so that's a big priority for us next session is to make sure that we're addressing those costs that are hitting families most, like child care, prescription drugs, and housing. K-12 education, a leading issue for many voters. What is your campaign's top priority for K-12 education? So I actually was just speaking with uh, some teachers in the last couple of days and the superintendent here in our district, starting to get a sense from them of what their priorities are for the next state budget. Racine Unified uh, had a significant budget deficit going into this school year. Uh, they laid off a lot of uh, education professionals in our schools that we really frankly could not afford to lose. Uh, and we're looking at a budget deficit again for next year. We had uh, almost a 10% uh, 
cut this this cycle so really difficult times for our school district here and this is in a moment where we know that there are real needs that our students have coming out of the pandemic there was some learning loss there we really need to be investing in our schools i hear it again and again from people in this community parents educators even students right who want to make sure that they have access to great opportunities in our schools are you looking at increased per people funding across the board or anything yes i would like to see a significant increase in the reimbursement rate for special education as well as a significant increase in per pupil funding. What about higher education? The state's four-year colleges, two-year colleges, technical colleges. What does the future of that system look like to you, and where should the legislature be focusing? Yeah, so we're really lucky in our region here to have both Gateway Technical College and UW Parkside institutions that are really focused on uh, supporting people in Racine County to enter the middle class and they do a great job in that right training nurses and educators and first responders and many other people to get good jobs that allow their families to to do well in our community so I would like to see us really focus on both k-12 as I mentioned and higher ed of course, we saw uh, the UW system make an ambitious request this year, uh, $855 million to bring us just to the median of funding for uh, public universities in the country, you know, state by state. Uh, I'd really like to see us do that. I think it's really important that we make those investments now. We have been underfunding the UW system since Republicans took control of the legislature, and it's a real problem. Uh, our institutions have done everything they can to scrape uh, and, and cut, but there's no, there's no fat left to cut there. What do you see as the state's largest workforce development challenge and how would you pro propose to address it? Yeah, so what we see in our neighboring states like Michigan and Minnesota um, is that they both have young people choosing to stay and they have people moving. What I think we need here in communities like Racine County is a place where people want to live. When I talk to major employers, one of the first things they bring up is our schools. We need to have strong schools that are a draw for people to come to this community. We need to have affordable housing, places that people can buy their first home uh, and raise a family. And we need to have communities that feel welcoming and safe. What we've seen from Republicans is culture wars and attacks on our rights. What we should be doing is investing in our public spaces and our downtowns, making sure that we have good schools and great opportunities for folks to raise their families here. A few more workforce questions. Uh, investments in public and energy infrastructure grow our state's economy. This also provides an opportunity to invest in our state's workforce, but currently there are no requirements for hiring local workers. Would you support a state resident hiring requirement for state, local, and utility scale infrastructure investments? Yes, yeah, so of course our, our energy infrastructure is rapidly changing. Uh, before I came into legislature, I worked on the issue of climate change. It's very important to me that we continue to build out our clean energy infrastructure and that that creates good jobs. Racine is a historic manufacturing community. I've got relatives, you know, way back who worked on the line and in the tractor plant. We know that those kind of jobs help people enter and stay in the middle class. And so I really hope that when we uh, continue to do this build out of energy infrastructure and investing in our long term resilience here, that we are uh, putting a preference on those local workers who are going to stay here and raise their families here. That's maybe not a requirement. Yeah, I think wherever possible we should have local workers, right? So that's always going to be my, uh, my hope. Employee classification is an issue in the construction industry. Some employers misclassify workers as independent contractors or pay them in cash off the books. This lowers costs by avoiding payroll taxes and unemployment insurance, and it puts compliant companies at a disadvantage when bidding on projects. Plus, misclassified workers may be denied minimum wage protections or overtime pay. Are you aware of this issue, and what do you think should be done about it? Yeah, so I actually went on a tour with the carpenters um, of some uh, construction sites and saw what was pretty clearly uh, subcontractors of subcontractors and workers who were very likely being misclassified on some drywall projects. Uh, we know that this is a problem uh, on many levels. We know that it 
prevents those employees from uh, getting access to the benefits and, and sometimes the pay that they deserve. It creates uh, an unfair playing field, right, for the good actors who are trying to treat their employees well. And it can cause problems with the work, right, if you don't have people who are licensed and trained, gone through, let's say, an apprenticeship program uh, and training with the carpenters union. So it is a, a problem that I'm aware of, and I think it's really important that we make sure that we are uh, holding our employers uh, to a high standard. Affordable rental housing, you talked about housing as an issue. Uh, some support government imposed rent control to maintain affordability, while others argue keeping rent artificially low will decrease rental supply, resulting in increased prices. What is your sense of housing as an issue and which best addresses rental housing affordability? Is it rent control, building more rentals, or some other solution? Yeah, so I think our focus is going to be building more housing. Uh, we hear regularly from people who are seeing their rent increase, but who are also trying to buy their first home and are having a really difficult time. We know that that sort of starter home category, right, is uh, really difficult to build. And then there's not enough of those houses for folks who want to buy them here in Racine County and across the state. So it is a focus for us going to next session to do what we can to work with partners, stakeholders to increase access uh, to those uh, homes. We saw actually some bipartisan work on this last session. It was one of, I think, the, uh, the highlights of the session in terms of bipartisanship. And I know that we hear about it in every community, right? Urban, suburban, and rural. So I am hopeful that we're going to be able to increase access uh, to housing next year. I will also note that there were important tenant protections that were removed in the last decade under Republican control. And we have seen the impact of that in places like Racine, where uh, we're not able to hold landlords to a higher standard where they might be price gouging their, their tenants. So we do need to make sure that we're protecting renters as well. Medical systems are facing numerous headwinds in the form of inflation, workforce development, and issues around Medicare and Medicaid reimbursement resulting in fewer services and, as you know, even the closure of a hospital system in western Wisconsin. What would you do to preserve access to care and prevent future closures? Yeah, so I've had a lot of conversations about this with uh, local leaders at our hospitals here and then statewide. I would say the first thing for, for me and for our caucus would be expanding Badger Care, bringing in, I believe it's about $1.7 billion to the state, and using part of that to increase reimbursement rates. We know that there are some hospitals, particularly in rural communities, in low-income communities, who are, burden, who are shouldering uh, a lot of the burden of those unreimbursed costs, right, or those low uh, reimbursement rates for, for Badger Care. And so we need to make sure that they are able to, uh, to continue providing these services. You know, I know that a lot of other hospitals around the state are struggling too, uh, not just those, those hospitals in western Wisconsin. And we are at risk of seeing further closures uh, if we don't do something. So I'd really like to see us increasing reimbursement rates for some of those critical services so that we are able to continue providing them in each community. Mental health care, also a growing concern for Wisconsinites, concern for state and county budgets. What are you hearing on this issue in your district and, and what are the solutions? Sure, so um, we're really grateful here that there's a project actually moving forward uh, led by the county and former county executive Jonathan Delagrave uh, who uh, uh, really believed that we needed to provide better access to mental health here in our community, uh, mental health care. And so uh, we've got a, a project moving forward that's actually going to help meet the need here in Racine County. Um, but I do hear about this quite a bit. I was actually speaking with a nurse um, from one of our schools last night while I was out knocking on doors who told me that they just do not have what they need to meet the needs of every student um, in our schools. We know that young people are really struggling with mental health and frankly it's heartbreaking to hear these stories about the struggles that young people uh, face and the lack of access to care. So we need to work on uh, increasing access to providers in Wisconsin. Uh, we know that the governor just uh, 
uh, had a task force right on the on the healthcare workforce, and there were a number of suggestions that came out of that about how to increase that uh, behavioral health and mental health workforce. So, would love to see us tackling some of those uh, recommendations in the next budget. Things like helping folks get that training and uh, having less student debt, hopefully, when they come out, so that they're able to go into practice and stay there. Uh, you mentioned this at the beginning of the interview, and I want to ask you again directly, how should Wisconsin move forward on the issue of abortion? So uh, right now, Wisconsinites do have access to abortion because of an ongoing court case, but I would really like to see us, uh, first and foremost next year, restoring uh, access to the rights that Wisconsinites had uh, under Roe v. Wade and putting that in state law. So that's our first priority, to make sure that we do not go back to a time in which Wisconsinites have no access to, the, to their reproductive rights. Uh, the issue of transportation. What are the pressing transportation needs in your district and how important is it that these are addressed and for the state to keep on schedule with the reconstruction of aging interstates and significant corridors of commerce? Yeah, it's a really good question. So um, as you can tell, I've been having a lot of conversations with folks in Racine lately, but I was just speaking to some of the leadership in, at Elmwood Park, a uh, small new municipality in my district. A few hundred people live there. And they were talking about a particular road in the district, right, that they hear about again and again. It's on the list uh, for repair, but it's a few years down the road. And so we do need to make significant additional investment um, in our infrastructure in the coming budget. We saw a pretty good road budget last time. Uh, we need to continue. We just know that we've got this aging infrastructure and that people feel it, right? Nobody likes to drive over a pothole. It also costs you know, people money once they have issues with their car because they've been driving on these roads uh, with a lot of potholes and, and, and whatnot. So that's an important piece for us. Um, we saw that the city of Racine was able to make uh, great investment in electric buses thanks to uh, money from the Biden administration that came in in the last few years. That's fantastic. We love to see green uh, transportation options for people in Racine, but of course there are still challenges getting around in the region. Um, folks who are trying to get to other municipalities, maybe to Milwaukee or Kenosha, go to school, right, at UWM or Parkside. We've got real challenges with our regional transportation. And of course, this area still wants that high-speed rail. Uh, and we're going to stay focused on making sure that we are connecting Chicago, Kenosha, Racine, and Milwaukee. The environment. I know that's a priority for you. PFAS and other water contaminants are concerned for a growing number of Wisconsinites. Um, how do you propose that we address the issue? So first of all, the Joint Finance Committee needs to release uh, the money that they are holding up on PFAS contamination. This is a really urgent issue for many communities, and frankly, the more we test, the more PFAS we find. And we know that this forever chemical has real health impacts on Wisconsinites. It's really shameful that the Joint Finance Committee has held up this money and frankly refused to hold polluters accountable as well. So that's the first step. We need to focus on that cleanup. We've got uh, some regulations, right, for, for new products, but we need to continue to look into this, see what they're doing in other states and at the federal level. And then, of course, we've also got uh, lead pipes in our community. The president, uh, Joe Biden, is actually in Milwaukee today talking about the plan, the EPA regulations to replace every lead pipe in this country in the next 10 years. That's a really good thing. Racine is on our way. I've been to some uh, events in the last year where we're replacing lead pipes and, and celebrating that work. But really, we'd like to see that move along more quickly. So I'm hoping that the state can do its part as well to make sure that we're bringing in those federal dollars and we're doing what we need to at the state level to to replace lead pipes as quickly as possible and not contaminate any more children with this really dangerous uh, substance. We're down to our last two questions. How would you describe the leading differences between you and your opponent? So I have now been in the legislature for a couple of years. I've had the opportunity to talk to thousands of people across this community about the issues that they care about. I have been a leader in my caucus, serving on the Joint Finance Committee, traveling around the state and advocating for a state budget that works for Racine County, and now serving as the Democratic leader. 
I am able to bring all those conversations that I've had with people in this community and all the issues that they really care about into Madison and I think really be an effective champion on these issues. We didn't get everything we wanted done last session, but we did see some progress on some important things and I was really pleased to be able to be a strong advocate for our community in that work. I always put Ricinians first, and I think what we have seen from Republicans in the legislature is a willingness to put corporations over people, like the Foxconn deal that local Republicans, Dave DeGroote included, were part of. I want to see us passing policy in Madison that's about improving people's lives here in Racine County now and into the future. Final question. Let's say you're reelected. You get this magic wand you can use in the state capitol to have just one issue resolved in a way that brings all parties, all people together. What is that issue? Yeah, well, it's always a hard question, but I do think given the urgency of the funding challenges facing our schools here in Racine County, it has to be funding for K-12. It's really wrong that we have young people who are going to school and not getting the services and the support that they need to succeed. Our educators are doing their absolute best, um, but we have seen cuts. Again, 10% cut going into this school year in our local school district that really impact uh, kids' ability to get a great education. And so I wanna see significant investment in our schools and the ability for each and every student to have a great opportunity uh, to get a good education that leads to a, a strong career for them and their families. Well, thank you, Representative Greta Neubauer of Racine. She is the Democratic candidate in the 66th Assembly District. The election is November 5th. Representative Greta Neubauer, thank you for talking with Wisconsin Eye. Thanks for having me. This programming is brought to you by our generous sponsors. Thank you for watching.